Okay, um, today I want to speak uh, briefly about Leonardo da Vinci, one of my favorite artists of all time. And um, he was a firm believer in that you copy directly from nature. Uh, a lot of artists copy other artists. Basically, his view on that was that you are getting things second generation removed from nature. Um, it's like a copy, a photocopy of a photocopy where you lose the integrity of the original image. Now, um, I think as a young artist, it's very important to copy other artists. You learn more from copying say a Leonardo than you will from any art school. Most art schools are bunk and they teach you very little, especially about the Renaissance or, or drawing in general. So for some reason, it seems very difficult. It is very difficult to copy from nature. You know, if I went outside right now, there's a lot of snow on the ground and um, it's much easier to stay indoors and copy from another artist who went outside and painted the snow. But there's something lost there if you um, rely too much on other artists from art history. And if you notice, uh, Leonardo's, one of his big premises was that uh, there's correlation in nature. In other words, if you look at a woman's curls and a woman's hair, they will correlate directly to the uh, eddies in a stream um, of running water or a storm cloud and if you look there's a great paint a drawing pen and ink drawn by Leonardo where there was a storm and things fell from the sky that normally wouldn't be in the sky kind of random frogs and Stuff. He drew a picture of this, and if you look at the clouds, and the way he drew them in the storm, they look exactly like the curls and some of the uh, hair of women that he drew. So there's this constant thread in his work, um, showing the correlation of nature. Again, it's important as a young artist to copy other artists. It, I spent months copying Leonardo and Michelangelo and all the old masters, and um, there's so much to learn. But that only goes so far unless you want to wind up looking like one of your heroes, um, which is basically avoiding something in yourself because every artist has their own individual thing and for some reason it's the hardest thing to address or to um, to bring forth into your work and therefore a lot of artists um, very derivative and not uh, and uh, people know when you're derivative and they also know when you're digging something out from your own gut that interests you for some reason artists don't generally trust their own gut speak to this in person but it's uh, very hard to trust what's in your gut to bring it forth into uh, to your canvas or a drawing and um, the closer you get to that the better your art becomes and people will relate to it I painted some very dark weird paintings that I never expected to sell I thought people would even want to look at them I don't even like to look at a lot of these um, paintings series of uh, lost souls I call them I don't even like to have them around. <laughs> uh, but uh, people resonated. They did come directly from my gut. I didn't even like to look in there. But people resonated with them and wanted to buy them. I never, I never expected to sell one of them. It's kind of a weird paradox. You know? So uh, again, though, uh, 
if you look at nature, there seems to be some kind of perfection to it. It's almost like man's attempt at painting or man's woman painting is an attempt to mimic God, what God did with nature. So basically on a flat surface, you're trying to create what's out there, outside your window or inside your window. Um, and it's almost like you're attempting to be a creator. You are attempting to be a creator, much like the creator of whatever's out there trying to mimic it. Um, it's almost like trying to emulate the hand of God. Um, it sounds kind of heavy, but in a sense you are. It's whatever, whoever, whatever made the sky. Um, it's pretty damn amazing. It's a painting that changes every day. And you're trying to ape it. It's best you're aping it. You're lucky you have opposable thumbs. Um, so that's kind of my view on, on where Leonardo was coming from. And you're only going to go so far copying Leonardo. I've copied him to death. But then there's a whole different ballgame going outside and drawing a tree, painting a tree, or snow, or storm, whatever, as opposed to seeing it secondhand to another artist. Um, and that was one of the biggest things. He also said that if you spend time with one other person, you're half yourself. If you spend time with three, two other people, you're a third yourself. Um, which I understand. You know, artists tend to spend a lot of alone time. And uh, that's, you, you, you need that. You know, I guess that's why it's hard for a lot of artists who have families with a lot of kids. Because they take you know, that time away from you um, that you would be alone creating. But then again, kids are a wonderful, I'm not knocking kids, they're a wonderful thing. But you have to 100% be committed to, to raising a family. It's kind of like either your art becomes your family or, you know, you uh, kind of split the ranch up a little bit. Um, but, uh, so, I, I in, the, in the annals of our history, annals, annals, whatever, um, I'd have to say that my favorite artists would be Michelangelo, Leonardo, Raphael, Botticelli's up there in a weird way. Velasquez, Goya, for his imagination. Jericho is a great artist. Um, the Impressionists only go so far for me. I like them. I like Van Gogh. Um, you know, I think there's the 19th century guys, Bouguereau. Technically, they're great, but there's not much to aside from the technique there. You know, I kind of prefer the romantics. It's the neoclassical kind of David school. Um, and, uh, I don't know, there's some oddballs out there. Albert Pinkham Ryder was a great artist. Monk, Norwegian, amazing painter. Odd Nerdrum, living great genius. I studied with him amazing experience that was um, but wrapping it up the hardest thing to get through is what makes you you as an artist and it's just kind of like peeling layers of an onion it's basically about figuring out what you're not you know I know I'm not an abstract artist that stuff doesn't move me I don't go to the MoMA once a year and then I've seen enough I, um, I go to the Metropolitan weekly I look at the same paintings. I never get bored of them. So it's kind of what resonates with you. It's part of how you discover who you are as a painter. Maybe you'll never know because um, it's an ongoing process. I just think the great sin is to get caught, caught up in just being a copyist of someone else. Um, and you go through those phases. I was a Dali fanatic. I was a Da Vinci fanatic. Still am. But you have to take what you can out of those artists and then 
it's kind of a melting pot in your subconscious. You throw all that crap together and um, stir it up and distill out what you are, which is kind of by process of elimination as to what you aren't, if that makes any sense. But, um, but to paint a naturalistic face that looks like a face is going to time peg you to a period because it's really not done much anymore, although it's a resurgent. Um, you paint a realistic face, you know, you're going to be competing against all the realistic faces throughout our history, which is a pretty big mantle to take on. If you slop some paint on tinfoil, people can't really peg that to anything. There's a bit of a nonsense involved in the art world today. Um, anyways, that's my, uh, my two cents on Leonardo nature and digging through and finding out who you are is a artist painter.